Michael Jordan is a name that almost everyone recognizes, even if you don't know anything about basketball. By the end of Jordan's career, he was widely regarded as the greatest basketball player in history, and just like with all NBA stars, their impact on the game is measured by what they do in the playoffs. Jordan played a total of 179 playoff games in his entire career, which includes 37 playoff series and 6 NBA Finals, where he was undefeated. But despite all the years Jordan was in the playoffs, he only played a total of 3 Game 7s. And in those 3 games, he won 2 of them and lost once. None of those Game 7s happened in the Finals either. How's it going fellas, my name's Andy, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the three times Michael Jordan has ever played in a Game 7. And thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. It's an app that aggregates ticket prices from all over the web to help you find the best deals for games, concerts, Broadway shows, and other events. The prices marked in green are good, while the ones in red are bad. The app is very easy to use, and you can also see the view from your seats before you buy it, which is my favorite feature. I used the app to buy tickets to a Knicks game last year, and the process was very smooth. Use my promo code ANDY at checkout to get $20 off your first purchase. Alright, let's get started. The 1990 Eastern Conference Finals Before Jordan started his reign of dominance, he had to overcome some tough obstacles. The major obstacle was the Detroit Pistons, the bad boys. Jordan lost to the Pistons for three straight years, and 1990 was the last year that he would lose to them. The Bulls faced the Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals this year, and for the entire series, the home team won every single game. Jordan averaged 32 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists per game on respectable efficiency, and for the most part, he was consistent throughout the entire series. In Game 7, Jordan continued his dominant play, finishing with 31 points, 8 rebounds, and 9 assists. However, the rest of his team struggled a lot. The Pistons were implementing what everyone called the Jordan Rules, a strategy that they've used every single time since 1988. Basically, every time Jordan had the ball, they tried to force him left, and then they would send a hard double team. More often than not, the Pistons would instantly double team him at the moment he even touched the ball. This strategy worked well in the past few years because Jordan had very little help offensively. He was forced to give up the ball, and when he did, his teammates could not capitalize. But by 1990, Jordan did have help. Scottie Pippen became an all-star this year, and Horace Grant continued to improve as well. That's why the Bulls were able to push the Pistons to a Game 7 in the first place. But unfortunately, a few hours before the game, Pippen was not feeling very well. He found out that he had some flu-like symptoms, some migraines, and a terrible headache. And that's a huge reason why he was awful in Game 7. Pippen played fairly well for the first 6 games, but in Game 7, he only shot 1 for 10 from the field and scored just 2 points. Horace Grant also struggled offensively, scoring 10 points on 3 for 17 from the field. The second and third best player on the team were both struggling. So even though it looked like that this could be the year the Bulls finally break through the Pistons, it all came crashing down. The Bulls only made 28 field goals for the entire game, and 13 of them came from Jordan. The rest of his team did not play well at all as Detroit once again ended Chicago's playoff run. The 1992 Eastern Conference Semifinals By 1992, Michael Jordan was on top of the world. Him and the Bulls were the defending champions, and Jordan led the team to 67 wins in the regular season, which at the time was a franchise record. And just like in the previous season, they were expected to win the title once again. But this time, the playoffs were really rough. In the second round, they matched up against the New York Knicks in a very low-scoring, grinded-out series, where neither team cracked the 100-point mark in the first five games. Oh, and this was also the first year that Pat Riley was coaching the Knicks, and he was a major help in turning the team around. In a series that sparked the rivalry between the Bulls and Knicks in the 1990s, Jordan and the Bulls ultimately prevailed. In Game 7, Jordan had one of the most clutch performances of his career, finishing with 42 points. 18 of those points came in the first quarter as the Bulls were trying to go for the quick knockout punch. 
Jordan was described as playing on a different level than anybody else, making jumpers, spinning left and right on driving moves like a ballet dancer, and making the Knicks' head spin. There was simply no stopping him. The Knicks were actually able to hold off Jordan's assaults in the first half, but by the time the second half started, it was all Chicago. Their defense tightened up and the Knicks managed to score only 30 points in the second half as they lost the game 110-81. to After the game, Jordan said, This series might give us the hunger like we had last year. New York deserves credit. They woke us up. We felt the pressure. This experience hardened us for the next series. We walked into the series thinking it would be a sweep, but it went 7. After this series, the Bulls would win their next two rounds in six games each, capturing their second NBA championship. The 1998 Eastern Conference Finals In Jordan's final playoff run, he played in one of the toughest series of his career. The Indiana Pacers this year were ridiculously good, equipped with a top 5 offense and top 5 defense. This was their best shot at dethroning the Bulls. The series was extremely competitive from the start, and in 6 of the 7 games, the final score was decided by 6 points or less. This also included a Reggie Miller game winner in Game 4, which made everybody believe the Pacers had a legitimate chance to beat them. So, in Game 7, it was very interesting. Jordan did not shoot the ball well at all, going 9 for 25, and neither did the rest of the team. Collectively, they shot 38% from the field and 59% from the foul line. But what they did do well was grab a ton of offensive rebounds. They got a total of 22 offensive rebounds in this game, which is freaking crazy, and that's what saved them. With a sequence of defensive stops and timely shots, the Bulls managed to pull it through and won the game 88-83. During Jordan's championship reign, this series was the closest he came to losing. What made the series different from the others was that this time, the Bulls were fighting to remain on top. Up until this point, they've won 5 championships, going deep into the playoffs every year, and they were really fatigued and really exhausted. According to Bill Simmons, what cemented their legacy wasn't the first five titles, but the last one, when they were running on fumes and surviving solely on pride, and Jordan's indomitable will. The exhausted Bulls wouldn't roll over for a really good Pacers team that seemed ready to knock them off. The 1998 Bulls looked like a team desperately holding on to their crown, and although we all know that they ultimately won their 6th NBA title, it was the most difficult and hardest road out of any other year. And that sums up the video. Those were the three times that Michael Jordan played in a Game 7. It's a bit of a surprise that he didn't play in more, but it makes sense when you think about it. In the early part of his career, his teams were getting stomped by the Celtics and Pistons, but in the later part, his Bulls were the most dominant team in the league, so most of the time, they didn't even need to go to a Game 7. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.